Everybody's wanting to know, like, what is that question you learned? So tell us, what is that question that you learned that that you were doing it the wrong way that now you kind of tweaked it? Tell us, give spill the beans, man. Don't hold back. It was the the rationale question. And I was asking it like this. I was saying, you know, so like just just so I could see the rationale behind why you might be looking to to get more clients and grow your business. But besides that, you know, what's the reason you're looking to really grow your business now? I would slow that down a bit like this is for brevity. And then what I should be doing is is the rather. So just so I could see the rationale of why you're looking to grow your business, get more clients now, rather than just sort of stay where you are. Now, why? Okay, so you learned that from me today because I said, look, you have to go. You can't just say why now. You have to give them the alternative, right? Why is that so important psychologically to a prospect that you give them those two options. You know, this is a culmination of what I've learned from you, what I've learned from Matt as well, right. is staying where you are yeah. is an option. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can stay in status quo. Yeah, people will say, I've got no option, and it's a load of garbage. You do have an option. You can stay where you are because you have. Yeah. But what this does psychologically is it's not for me. Like, yeah. through detachment, I've learned that I want you to move, but I'm not going to die if you don't. This is yeah. for you. Yeah. And so doing this gets yeah. them to explain to themselves mm. why why do I want do I want to stay here? Like Yeah. It makes them question their way of thinking that yeah. has allowed their situation to stay the same, to allow the problem to stay the same, right? So just so I can see the rationale behind why you might be for your industry, right? This is industry specific right now. So John, just so I can see the rationale behind you, you know, possibly looking at you know, getting more coaching to like scale the business. But besides that, like what, I guess what's the main reason why you're looking for more on that type of business coaching to get you to that level rather than just trying to, you know, figure it out yourself. Now, when they say, well, I can't figure it out myself. I need to get this blah, 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 blah. They then can't come back at the end and say, well, I think I'm just going to do this myself because they've already told themselves and you from your question that that's not an option for them. Yeah. Is, is everybody again, that psychological just, shift? Yeah. You've just shown me again, like how I've, I've just really got to sharpen that up. Like that's, um, yeah, yeah, it's killer. And, and also today you dropped some objection hand. Like I, I think we've been working through the last little while and we're starting to get to the end of our process. Yeah. We might, we might get some objections and just hearing yeah. how you turn your objections into problems. Yeah. And then, you know, there's still no attachment there. Like it's, it's like, yeah. this is a problem. We can work it out. And it's uh, collaborative. Like, I'm working with that person yeah. collaboratively to see if I can help them solve their problems. They don't have to change their situation. I'm okay with them staying in the same situation they're in and the problem still happening and staying in the status quo. It doesn't impact me. It only impacts who? Them. Yeah. Yeah. Only and you did that. You did that in a in a role play with yeah. one of the guys this morning, and you, yeah. you like someone said, "Oh, you know, maybe I uh, something along the lines of, you know, I can't go and get finance for this." And your response was, "Well, maybe you shouldn't." Yeah. And and I gasped. I was like, <laughs> "You can't say that." Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, may, maybe you maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. And you just was, pause, and you, do you see how they react? Yeah. It was it was just one of the uh, many many moments like that where I've just been like, you, no, you well maybe you, maybe you shouldn't. I mean, what happens if you don't go out and get funding to put into X Y Z so that you can and repeat back what they said they wouldn't? So what happens though if you don't go out and get funding to put into? I think we were talking about somebody who sells like an Amazon coaching business, right? So they yeah. sell business opportunities. So well maybe you shouldn't. I mean, what happens though if you don't go out and get funding to put into your Amazon business so you can scale it out? What happens at that point though? And it gets them to realize like, if I don't get the funding, I don't get what I said I wanted, right? And so you're tying in the price, the funding into what? What they said they wanted, what their objectives are, okay? If they can't get the funding, if they can't get the money, they can't get what they want. So now they're starting to think that once they get the funding, they get the results. So that's how you get them to start thinking results-based thinking rather than just most salespeople can only get them to think price-based thinking. 
And all of a sudden that price is up here and the problem doesn't seem that bad. But with NEPQ, it causes a gap in their mind where here's their situation right here. Here's where they want to be up here. Their objective, you know, their future state, we call it, right? Here's where they want to be. And what's this big gap in the middle of them not being able to get that? All these problems that you've helped them find. Now to solve that gap, they have to do what? Find the money. They have to find the funding for your solution to solve that problem. If they can't find the money, they don't get what they want. And and for my industry, mm-hmm. like for what I do specifically, mm-hmm. one of the struggles I always had, particularly people starting their their coaching business or their nutrition business, is to to get them to think like a business person. Yeah. And like to treat it like a business, not a hobby. Yeah. And with a business, you borrow money to invest for what you need. Like yeah. you just do that. Like that's yeah. expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like the way you did that today, you know, like what you were just saying there, because what mm-hmm. they're looking at now is like I'm not looking at a cost anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at an investment. I'm looking at an investment to get me where I want to go. And you're getting to think results-based thinking, and that's for any industry. It does not matter what your product or service or industry you sell us. Steve, I can't thank you uh, enough uh, for being on thank here. You. I know I know thank it's you. right in the middle of your work day. It's like almost nine o'clock for me. So my wife's like, what are you doing in there? Um, what's your advice for everybody listening? Like what, what type of advice would you give people listening in? Look, this is a life-changing method. Mm. Like if, if sales is what you do, I can't reckon, you know, I can't recommend enough, like just get involved. Like whether you know whether you whether you end up in the inner circle or not. Like I I really rate the inner circle, and uh, like I've already I've already got a massive massive return on investment. Yeah. And you know the the help is there, the tools are there, everything is there. Mm-hmm. And what I would say to people, if you're on the fence, um, handle your own objection. Do that first. Be congruent, and uh, and and jump in. Like your your ability to sell, and not just your ability to sell, like your your emotional approach to selling yeah. will change and it's it's yeah. free and you yeah. I think what i'm trying to say is like i i feel really good about who i am and what i do right now and so what yeah. that does for me is it makes me do it more yeah you're a problem finder and problem solver not a product pusher right yeah. you know and as our ceo matt Ryder says you know our new ceo he, he always says you know the objection you give is the objection you always get Right. So you have to learn how to overcome that. Your own objection that holds you back from getting you where you want to go. Yeah, that's right. hundred percent. And that's it. Steve, Steve, handle your own objection. I I love it, man. I wanted to bring out somebody new. I mean, you literally, I can't believe it. Like you literally started in this Facebook group 90 days ago. I looked it up. It was 91 days ago, 91 days ago. You got into the inner circle 62 days ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's not a lot of time, man. It's not. And um, I'm crazy. Like a, I can't wait to see what happens, you know, over the next uh, eight months. What have I got left? Yeah, months. I'm going to make a suggestion. I know you're rocking it and crushing it. You know, 30,000 plus months now are going to be a norm, probably a lot higher than that. But I'm just going to make a suggestion. You probably know about five to 10% right now. And I, I'd concur. Like I, I actually, I really concur. And that, and that's why, again, you know, if, if you're on the fence about this, like if you feel like you can get by with just what Jeremy's doing in the live and things like that, like there is a, there is a whole process to this. It's not about, uh, I listened to your podcast the other day with KD. KD Dorsey. Love that guy. Oh, incredible podcast. And what he said was like, don't, don't just take my words and throw them into your script. Like, don't, don't do that. Like there's a method, there's a, there's a ethos behind it. Yeah. And it's, um, it's true. It's a science. It's a science behind yeah. what we do here for sure. Yeah. So that's, that's my advice. Like don't, don't just sort of take a really cool objection handling method or a, a really cool connection thing from Jeremy and go, yeah, well now I'm done. That, that you're missing out. You're, doing <laughs> you're missing the other 98% of the puzzle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Steve, thanks. I know you've got some sales calls. I think my wife said, hey, I want to, she recorded the, is it The Bachelorette? She wants me to come watch The Bachelorette. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm here for the show. All right. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah. Thanks for being on. Thanks everybody. Uh, Steve, 
Keep it up, man. 90 days. I love your success story. And just put the pedal to the metal, as it's so-called, learning the right skills. And you're still learning the right skills. And I look forward to uh, big things from you in this group. Thanks, man. And I really appreciate everything you've done. Like, I, I really do. Changed my life. We're just starting. All right, guys. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Steve, awesome. Talk to you soon. See ya. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.